Hey, look. This is for entertainment purposes only. Explicit motherfucking content. Parental guidance is strongly suggested. Pay attention to what your kid's doing on the internet. Subscribe, like, share. Smoke for me to podcast. Let's get into the show. We is in this bitch. What the other ashtray? Oh, he got one. He got one. Guess we sure. I got one. Oh, well, what the fuck? Stay away from my ashtray. <laughs> nah, you bullshit, man. That shit big as hell. Jeez. <laughs> Special sessions, this bitch. All this shit don't stop, goddamn it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's y'all, boys and girls. Welcome that's to another y'all. special sessions. Welcome you back. already know what it is. Brought to you by yours truly. Smoke for me, the podcast. Smoke, smoke, we get bitch. somebody in our community doing some special shit yep. in our community, and we have a session with them. That's why yep. we call it a special. Session special one, just yeah. in case she ain't know. Just this in case. special sessions, we got the one, the only, none other than Michael Volano, ladies and gentlemen. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Appreciate bitch. you joining us, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all for the invitation. Up early. Hell yeah, ain't a man. This he might be only up. be the second, maybe the, time. maybe the second person. The deal yeah. in, yeah. in a year and a half. People don't be early. <laughs> People be yeah. late as fuck. Yeah, I try to be about my business, man. You know what I'm saying? Like first impressions, everything. And, yeah, yeah. And you know what I mean. Uh, I was always taught, you know, if you, you know, if you, if, if you ain't early, you ain't on time. So. That's what they be saying, yeah, man. Hey, if you're on time, <laughs> you're late, guys. Hey, yeah. The first time I heard that, I wasn't trying to hear that. Me either, though. Me either. If you're on, either, <laughs> if you're on time, you're late. It didn't make sense. Like, nah, you ain't making sense hey, to me fuck right you, now. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you made sense to me. Yeah. I've always been a punctual yeah, person. Yeah. And I hate waiting on people. That's one of my pet peeves. Ooh, what you say? Waste of time. Man, it's hey, terrible. Man. Man. Hey, I be wanting to fight. I'll never talk to you again if I had to wait on you more <laughs> right. than 10 minutes. Don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. Yeah. You, know what I mean? yeah. you got to reciprocate been, the respect. How you been, man? What's been going good, on, man? Man, just, just living, man. Just, just out here living. Man. Tell the people where to find you, the people that want to find uh, you. You can find me on, on everything. Michael Volano. That's... Uh, V I L L A N O. Uh, Instagram is Michael underscore Volano. Everywhere else, YouTube, uh, any uh, Spotify, any uh, streaming platform, Michael Volano. Check me out, you know, and, and uh, Ear Vision Studios. Ear Vision Studios. Already. It's a, it's a website. Uh, yeah, uh, w, uh, yeah, w, uh, Vision, uh, Studios. Dot com. Okay. Or Ear Vision Studios. Studio. Got to put the S at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's sir. more than one. It's yeah. plural. <laughs> Plur. Plur. All right, um, let's get into it. Dive into it. <laughs> tell the people, tell me, because I'm meeting you for the first time. Where Where are you from? Where you grow up at? Uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Born, All right. Born and raised. Born and raised. Deville, uh, quarter six. Yeah. Never lived anywhere else. Uh, just born and raised here. Yeah? Yeah. What's yeah. Up? yeah. That's, oh. yeah North Side, 35810. Oh, All right, yeah. got it. <laughs> north side. What the fuck zip codes in this bitch? What, what was it like uh, on the north side for you growing up? Man, it was beautiful, man. I um, I wouldn't change nothing, man. I learned a lot. Um, I, I was fortunate to see things uh, through a different lens that a lot of people don't get to see. I was the minority. Right. Yeah. You know, I was the uh, 3%, you know, Davis Hills, K through 8, Johnson, I came out of. So... Uh, you know, so but just so just had that Jeez. perspective and to be and to be culture, you know. So uh, and to you know just just be fortunate, man, just to have good people. You know what I'm saying? Just around me that's inspired me. Whether it's the you know you always have a second mom, you know your your third mom, or I, I was fortunate to have multiple uh, fathers that was in my life as well. Yeah. You know, just just you know saying through friends and stuff. So man, but Northside man, I, you know just I am I am you know saying who I am because of that primarily, and of course my family. That's what's so up. You, you grew up with siblings, uh, packed house, sisters. Small family, big family. We don't fuck with. Yeah, yeah. And I don't mean it in a bad way. Just my dad never. Uh, my dad's from Connecticut. Big, big family there. Um, and my mom from Texas. So we we're just small family. Just me, my sister, and my mom and dad. As far as like, that's it. We're Word. not from Alabama. Right. We're not from Alabama, but I'm from Alabama. You, you right. know what I'm saying? My I, heritage. I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, my, my, so. my mom from uh, Denver. Mm-hmm. And my dad from like Texas and Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, it was military. We was all born here and just yeah. grew up First here. First generation imprint. 
Yes, sir. Implants? implants? No, no, we didn't no. implant. Yeah, implant. No, just first generation hunts, <laughs> hunts billions. Like a titty. Kind of like a titty. I felt that way this morning. Oh, okay. somebody was sneezing on you? No. You had some milk coming out your yep. head. You got it. Man, sometimes <laughs> life sucks like a titty. Hey, you know what <laughs> That's what's up. So you was you was running around the neighborhoods with all the other folks that was running around the neighborhood. Yeah, that we, went to Davis yeah I'm Hill. from the outside generation. Yeah. I'm from the, Man, we, okay. we going outside and play generation. Man, yeah. <laughs> you went nigga knocking? Uh I, I remember uh driving in vans and stuff. Yeah. We would we would go <laughs> knock and run. Yeah. Uh huh. Why would you That's say why? that? Cause he they, he did can't that. call it nigga. Like I didn't say no. Didn't I don't call, call it that, that but yeah, I, I, so. know, I know, I know, I know what that phrase means. I'm, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Like, yeah. I took some white folks nigga knocking before. You can't call it that when they go though. You gotta call what? it something else, cause it's more than niggas knocking that. <laughs> what niggas, do you call it then? That's knock, the only thing I've ever knock, known. Knocking rolling. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Did, did you? What it, do you call it? something else. Um. Ding dong ditch. Ding dong ditch. Oh, that's I have what, that's heard what of that. That's what we called it. Yeah. Ding dong I ditch. Have heard yeah. of that. It took me a minute because I was right. thinking, because there's another one phrase I got now. I can't remember, but that's what we used to call you it. Right, you right. We, we ding right. dong ditch. Yeah. That's why, like, that's that's the kind of. <laughs> so you was bad. I was mischievous. <laughs> Amen. I, mind. I, mind. I was mischievous. Very Amen. mischievous. Amen. <laughs> I'm talking about I took people. Yeah, yeah. Mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> mischievous. Give, you got a, a question that'll. Come off of mis- being mischievous. Let's see what what happens. Um, okay, <laughs> so you was mischievous. See how mischievous you is now. Um, tomorrow <laughs> there's gonna be a purge. Mm. You what got kind of, what kind of purge? Like the purge, the purge. purge. Like the movie like purge. The, yeah, yeah okay, it's yeah. going down. Okay, you got the option. If you stay in the house, you can, the house is safe. Can't nobody come to your house fucking with you, but you can't leave your house. If you leave your house when it's time to purge, you can't come back in if you get scared while they out your purge. Not till the sun comes. You out. Right, right, right. Is it 24, 12? It's, it's, 12, it's, it's 12, 25, um, I think. What we doing? Um, we ain't never had a time. We did it till the sun come up. I, I, so, I, so if 12. I'm thinking movie related, I think it's till the sun come up. Okay. Whatever. To the, yeah. We're going to do 12. All right, I bet. So what you doing? You staying in the house or you outside? That's or you factory purge? shit. And I'm, I'm staying yes. inside. I'm staying inside and I'm... I'm protecting my I'm staying inside. I don't, they don't need protecting that. They in there, they say. Yeah, well, well, I'm staying in the house then. I'm, okay, I, I ain't going to purge. I'm, yeah, I mean. No more purging. No yeah, purging. I wouldn't. No. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much what, what we get from most people. I say it's about 50-50. It's, I, get, think it's about, I think it's about 70 30 for real. Really? We fair as seldom get it. I'm finna go purge. But, you know, folks don't just get the rules for some reason real quickly. To make a decision, they be like, "Well, what happens if I? Well, yeah. can I do this? I tried to well, explain. I'm gonna go in and go back out. Thoroughly. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. You, See, I don't. <laughs> I, I think if you purge, on, you gotta get that's some shit you got inside. You want to get out, ain't it? Or somebody else you want to get you know out? What I mean? <laughs> no, facts. You know what I'm saying? One or the other. Yeah. You, know, you got so some I, anger issues. Or, <laughs> I was or it's, saying, like, it's somebody you've been waiting on. What, what are the intentions of purging? Like, like it's whatever you want. That's what, no, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. like, if you was a person, you we, might we, just want, you might just want some Rolexes, hey. say <laughs> for your life, later. but for your life, you might not get killed. Might you not. might? Are you right? What's you the might. risk? What's the risk? It's, it's, what it's you think? I didn't think what about think nobody going looting. Yeah. Just, to, I didn't think about nobody purging just to loot. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, I guess but it's then, possible. but then, ain't it? You go out there and then. Then you yeah. fucking get shot for no reason. Yeah, on and the they, way home with they, your Rolex. Now, now you didn't rob the whole place but no, for got, them, and they didn't be, rob you. You got to be ready for that too. Like you got to, if you see anything yeah. on the way to the, yeah, the, nah, the party or so, you got to shoot it. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't worth it. No, ain't no Rolex yeah, in the world worth yeah. it, bro. Ain't anything. no Rolex. Yeah, no, nah, realistically, that would be some fucking wild ass. <laughs> shit. I'm purging. That I'm going that outside. What's the first thing you're gonna do? I'm, I'm, I'm. For real, for real, I, I feel like now I ain't never thought about it, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's most some inner shit. Because I feel like if you out here, I don't have to have no person to beef with you. Like you out here, you know what it is. He yeah. just want to go use his guns. You know what it can be. You know what, like what it is. Yeah. So I guess you on, heard him. You on, said if you see anything, shoot it. On my way, right, to, not right. even a person. Shoot just, first. On my, on my later, way right? to the Rolex though, if I see anything that move. <laughs> Ooh, that's a long ride to the, no, to like the Rolex. No, a tree blowing the wind. Kato, that's, hey, that's oh, a shit. long ride, my boy. That's very adventurous. It is. I don't know if that's mischievous. That's adventurous. And then I can't even, you can't drive. 
You got you can't even drive. You got to walk. Cause you drive, you too, you, you too obvious, man. Ah, mm. uh, I guess yeah, you don't plan on getting up, much better. Yeah, it just ain't worth it, man. I say no purse for me, man. <laughs> the long term, and if I got to, and I got to get out and get it, cause my family ain't got it. No, you ain't got to, man. It's just okay. Well, yeah, that's a different it's, situation. It's just like today, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you ain't purge, and because of it, they they nominate you the most honorable person in America. <laughs> <laughs> you get to become the president for a day. Uh huh. President Villano. Yes, sir. What you do while you're president for this one day? Anything you pass, any executive decisions you decide to make. Are you talking about legislation? They they hold you know, whatever you want to do. Wow. Whatever, just but I'm whatever. saying whatever you do, they not gonna come like tomorrow and reverse this shit. This this is what it is. But you got to tell us how you gonna do it. The too. very first thing. Very first thing. What you doing? Oh, uh, I get rid of race. Get rid of racism. Race. No race. Race. And you just can't. Category. It ain't a thing. So we're gonna have a human okay. race. Okay. All right. You ain't no box. Just say we human race. We can have nationalities where we're from and where where our, where our ancestors are, where our heritage and cultures from. But race is probably one. You know, I don't what I'm know saying just something the president could do. I'm the president. It can be on the forms. <laughs> Wait, but what? what how, can, how you get rid of race though? The same way they. The same way it got created about 200 years ago. <clears throat> If, it, if they can create it, why you can't get rid of it? It's, but no, nah, race always been a thing. But I guess well, you, you can take it. It ain't been a thing, no. You can take it off, off documents <laughs> and shit. What I'm saying, like most people, so like back in the day, I don't want to state, I don't want to misstate no dates, but I'm pretty sure it's not too long ago that they just started doing race instead of like where you from as a, a national, like if you from uh, North America, and then you North American. Right. You're not a right. race. It's from the community you from. So we build a community at the same time instead of division and saying I'm, White, I'm Caucasian, et cetera, et cetera. It just get that's just leverage for me in my mind. But as a president, that's the biggest thing because, and and you know, so I think because they always after all these years, man, they, you know, they, they'll push other things, other things like uh, you know, your, your sexual preference. Before all of that stuff that's been going on is way more detrimental, and haven't addressed that yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, I you never thought about. You know, so I, I guess I am North American. Yeah, I thought about that the other day, though. I think it builds community. If <coughs> it wasn't community, unity. You know what I'm saying? The word unity. Bars. I'm no more African American than you are European American, for real. Right. That's why the other option is black and white. There's no way I. I, mean, I ain't never been to Africa. We American. can't really say what we are truly no, aside right. from being american yeah i'm north american mm-hmm. what else we're doing president villalano uh we we passing weed all around it's legal okay right. man uh, I, that would have uh, been my uh, first thing yeah uh recreational use oh, and, and really. medicinal you know what oh, this is mm-hmm. and uh the third thing probably is you get this fucked up food right oh, well, shit. Fucked up the food. Shit, that food man they Got us eating chemicals, man. We ain't even eating food no more. We ain't eating nutrients. We eating chemicals. You know what I mean? We ain't even Maybe. eating. You know, uh, you turn around the box, you, you gonna. <laughs> I yeah. tell you, I tell you what did it for me. I went to Popeyes one day, right? You know, it was back when they had the big sandwich, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, uh, thing going on, and and um, and I got a red velvet cake. Okay, so I ate the motherfucker, and that motherfucker was one of the best motherfucking shits I ever had. I ain't never had. It, it was man. about like this. It was a, it was a limited edition, about like yeah. this, right? You know, a little miniature one. So I felt on the bottom, the bitch felt like a coupon. I said, okay, shit, it's a coupon. Open that bitch. That bitch unfolded like like a, like a motherfucking prescription bottle. You know how you nah. open up. Got out of the, nah. But this yeah. all the chemicals. And I'm like, man, I, nah. ain't, even, I ain't even eating, though. This but if you really think about it, if you really think about it, though, we ain't even eating. What it says. Like, look at it. Eat. If you look, look at the box, unless it say, like, peanuts, you eating peanuts. But I'm just saying, like, look at all the process. Yeah. You yep. know what I'm saying? So I just think yep. that, that needs a revision. The the whole health chart, milk ain't good for us. Yeah, it don't do the body good. Why we drinking mucus for one? You know what I mean? So I just think a lot yep. of issues down there. That and wonder why we wild. have health issues and that's created by mostly what we eating How primarily. We change my opinion. That what can we do? What 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 we gonna do? How we gonna change uh, this? Get natural. They about money and cutting corners. They they did it back in the day. You know what I'm saying? It's just they weren't profitable because they got to. I mean, you can still like if you go to Whole Foods and shit. It, depending on where you shop at, nah, you can, uh, it don't matter where you same. shop. You can get you some organic gonna, shit. Show me. I'll tell you what then. He said, no matter where you up, shop, bring you up have your to box that's something you would normally buy that don't have some chemicals in it that you can know what it is from regular basic science. That's what I'm saying. Don't don't buy shit out the box. Box. Buy this shit from scratch. Yeah, he's saying but, there won't be an option to get that shit. 
You can only get the good shit. Even even the meat. Meat ain't supposed to be red. That's die. Well, yeah, yeah. It's you see what I'm saying? It's so it's all this. They, they got shit. they got fish. <laughs> they got 3D printers that make meat. Shit gonna be a lot more. You know expensive. what I'm saying? They 3D printing fucking meat. Yeah. Motherfuckers cooking and eating and sanitary, just like meat. How do we know they ain't feeding us humans? Shit gonna we don't fucking know, bro. I'm just saying, we, oh, I'm just saying, shit. like, <laughs> how, how do you, you know? You found out you ate a how human? do you know, though? I mean, you don't know, but I I would, I would, guess I, I got to trust the That's USDA enough so, to know th- that I just I'm think it needs to be an overall people. revision because there's too many hands in, in, the, in the honey pot in the cookie jar that uh, getting too many of the profits off of it. Like, healthcare. I mean, that's a big rabbit hole, you know what I'm they saying? And I don't know a lot of facts. Shit. I just have a lot of opinions and percentages. I'm a percentage guy. It's hard things I believe in 100%. Besides uh, death and bills, bills gonna find your ass, and death got to come one day. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing I really believe in one hundred percent. You feel me? Except for there's a God and something higher than me that has to made all this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In my opinion, it's he just got mad because he wants his unhealthy food. That's I do too. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we was gonna work to that goal because well, no, it, it it's to, gonna it be a to lot more expensive us. to get. Not, uh, look, hold on, hold on, hold on, a, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. If I got to go, was president for a day, and right. he said, "This is what's gonna happen." And we and had that's to figure out how. That's all <laughs> no, I'm we saying. Don't. Yeah, yeah that was no, 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 no. no I, I don't, I don't think. I don't think the president, the president, don't figure these things out. You know what they do? They hire committees and teams to do that. <laughs> no, it wasn't in no rules. Yeah, I said he it the president. president. Now you, you gotta explain to us how we how we get to where we go. So how do we get there? Okay, so. One, we either grow our own shit, or number two, they go back and make the shit healthier. That's what I'm saying. So why, why? Do so they... we just take the bullshit off the market. It you needs to be revamped. You can't I sell can't, the bullshit. I can't. I can't say you can take everything out because because we as Americans have been trained, especially the Western world, we're brought up to be consumers and not business minded businessmen or women. We we we're indoctrinated to be consumers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we we're trained from they put the bottle in our fucking mouth. Yep. We train from the beginning. We get vax before we leave the hospital. Like, you know Got what I mean? To. Like, so they, you know, yep. I think all that needs overhaul. This needs another whole look. Uh, but, but that's probably my top three, man. With, with, because those are things that are personal to me that I think. Well, smoking weed, I just fucking enjoy. It. I, man, okay. I think it helps a lot of people more than it really does. Uh, too much of anything's bad for your health. So what the fuck right. are you gonna do? You drink too much water, you die yep. in one day. So, yep. what can you do? You know, yep. <laughs> I mean. You ain't lying. We need to make some weed legal. That's, that's a good. <laughs> Especially that's a good, Alabama. Uh, Come on now. That's a we're good three. Be last. But I think Mississippi gonna three. be last. We're we gonna, you know, we gonna healthy be food, weed, and what was the first one? Um, take race out of it and, race, and let's become right. nationalities again, and, yeah, and cultures right. and communities, and not say because because I can just say I don't. So if I say I don't like North Americans, I got like not like the whole United States. But if I say I don't <laughs> like a certain race. Then I can automatically train people to be like, man, I just don't like you just because you were yeah. born that way, and I have no choice. I didn't choose to be what color I am. But that shit I, ain't going nowhere you know, for real. Nah, no, of course not. They don't want it to. It's too much money made. That's another money be, made yeah. right there, man. You know. It yeah. will be interesting. Will it be will interesting, be interesting. Man. Um, yeah. Michael, how how did you end up getting into music? Huh? Ooh, what's the what's story. your what's your first memory? Do you remember like? The first time you liked a song and it was different from like how you like a song, how you liked a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle song when it come on. There was there was a few defining moments in my life. Um, the earliest one I can remember is. Ooh, the, I mean, I, I, music in general. So what I would say when my sister or actually my mom and dad could see my mom and dad had records. Line up all the wall, big big system, high fidelity equalizers. Like I don't know if y'all heard a, a stereo a, a speaker called Bozak, but they were some huge, I remember big this old speakers. Like they was probably about two hundred pounds each. But I, Jeez. you know, what I'm saying anyway. So we had big stereo. So I always was my mom listened to music in my womb. Probably don't remember, but probably my womb in the womb of my mother. Mm. And um, but the first memory I can pull up is me being in my room listening to a record player that lit up. And I remember that moment. It sound fire as hell. Yeah, what? Check this out. But later, later on in school, I had to do a presentation. And that was part of my spiel. Like, you know, how did, where did you come from? What do you remember? How, you know, how you know, musing stuff. Yeah. Kind of find out. I was at my mom, uh, probably about a, six months after that. And we had a conversation. I was like, uh, talking about it. I was like, you remember that record player that lit up? 
that you bought, and my mom was like, "We well, never buy your record player to lit up." I, and today, I say I see music in colors and numbers when I do music. Yeah. So I wonder if when I was when I was little, I remember a record player that lit up, or either yeah. maybe it was the music showing me. You know what I'm saying? My purpose yeah, then. Yeah, the uh, magical record player. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like some, <laughs> some reading book Man, shit, bro. Okay. Didn't, didn't, even, didn't even know it. I'm the trying to, right. but see, not nah, but but real shit though. So, and another thing, what the biggest influence? My sister took piano lessons, and she played the shit out of it. Man, it was super good. Read yeah. music and play music, and now was just my mom and dad had a piano I'd go in there and play. And uh, it was one Christmas, uh, my mom and dad bought my sister a uh, synthesizer. She broke that bad boy out and just started cranking Christmas carols. Man, no. that shit hurt my soul mm -hmm. <laughs> because I wanted to play. Right. So that was inspiration for me. Yeah. I went to my room and I ain't gonna lie, I had some sniffles. No. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was probably about six or seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was like, just because the attention, I just knew, I just know that music has always drawn me. I haven't, I didn't go to music. Music came to me. Yeah. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? So just going back analyzing. But I think just the biggest influence is, is my mom and dad records. I go sneak records. I go sneak the Roberta Flex, uh, the Al Jarreau's, the um, uh, I've never met anybody else whose parents play Al Jarreau. Man, they loved Al Jarreau, Quincy Jones, all that stuff. Orchestra. I mean, you know, did you um, were the Linda two Ronstadt, of them different? Did, did they like the same things, or could you tell this was mom's music on, or this was dad's? It was music all on? the same. It was all the same. Yeah, it was all the same. Um, just a love for music, man, and just. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's probably the earliest moments is that maybe their record player, but uh, just throughout time I've had pivotal moments that made me even love music and and notice how that um, music needed me just as much as I need music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important, especially doing something like music, because yeah, it'll it'll take from you as much as it can give. Right, right. <laughs> so right. You gotta... and, and, and the biggest best bet for that for me is what I tell myself, not tell myself, but what how how I feel is that is I let God and my gift use me now because I used to use my gifts but now I let my gifts use me and it's a whole different outcome yeah like totally that's what's up yeah that's what's up that sounds like an important ass lesson to learn um Roberta Flack and Al Jarreau that's quite a he said Quincy Jones. I know. Yeah, well, Michael Quincy Jackson, Jones, all that. You know what I'm okay. saying? Anything Quincy Jones. He, they had a lot of orchestra music too, and just there's a whole variety of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. who was that? I think it's Rick. He's a jazz musician. Jazz. Okay. And, yeah, he was known for uh, scatting too, like yeah. uh, type rhythm. No, he was. He was. Scatting. He was, it was but it was kind of tonal jazz type. But you know what I mean? Like super dope. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It, was, it was different. It was like pop jazz. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to see what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to see what Al talking about. Man, people, I'd, be, I'd be curious to see your face while you listen to Al Jarreau. I, I got a question for you though. When you do listen to it, I want you to when you first listen to the song, write down what you think he's saying. Okay, because it's gonna be wrong as hell. Like, <laughs> yeah, it might get a little tricky. Okay, then, yeah. that's what's up. Bone so, <laughs> what what was the moment where you went? into actually doing and creating music because you saw it that you had that you had to take the little time out to yourself to gather your emotions because you realize <laughs> all right i'm that was supposed to be me i didn't i didn't in know some type of way right so at some point down the line you began actually doing it when yeah. when did that happen um it happened as far as about 13 i used to go stay at my friend's house basically for the summer real cool good family friends and stuff and he had a little Casio keyboard, a little Casio mm -hmm. keyboard. He never did nothing with So he gave it to me. He was like, here, you know, you can have it. I don't do nothing with it. I just yeah. sit and tinker on it. And then that's when I just, I felt it. You know what I mean? I felt, you know what I'm saying, the love of doing it. Because the love of music and love and doing music is two separate things, totally. Just because you love music don't mean you can do it. Yeah. That, that's a whole different temperament. But uh, I, I think then I kind of, I didn't know then either. But that was the first step of me getting, if I didn't get that keyboard, it might have went differently, I feel, yeah. if I didn't get the keyboard. Uh, but the biggest thing is when my mom, I was in high school, started at ease, met Hodge, started a group called at ease, and my mom bought, went out on a limb, and back then, this is mid, mid early 90s, she bought a $1,000 plus keyboard from, um, what was that place I bought, Wild Music Store? Not Robbins. 
But uh, it was a music store anyway. But she went and bought it. But that was pivotal, man, for me learning. And then I knew um, I was supposed to be doing it because back then it wasn't internet. And we couldn't find beats. There weren't studios. There weren't YouTube beats back right. then in the, in the 90s. And nobody had the music, you know what I'm saying, we were looking for as a group. So, I, you know, I took it in my own hands to produce and, and do things for At Ease and the group group that, you know, I'm saying I was in back then in the early 90s. And and this just that, new, That man. was the name of the group. At Ease, yeah. A-T-T-E-Z-E. Yeah, okay. I remember uh-huh. seeing this shit, yeah. like, on a van, maybe. Shay. Mm-hmm. Hell. Yeah. He, Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, business genius. Long uh, Kyle time Jennings. Ago. Shout out to Kyle Jennings. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, 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 I remember the van I did. Yeah. I was thinking about yeah, that A T T E Z E that do say it is started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. So how how'd that come about? How'd y'all Oh uh, the the group? Yeah. Um <laughs> Man. Okay, so for my freshman year in high school. I ain't do shit. I rolled dice in the hall. I, you know, <laughs> skipped, played, duck the hall. Mischievous. All that shit. Nah, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Flipping quarters, odds, and evens, all that <laughs> okay, shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah. uh, but I, you know, Taking I just didn't apply. My, I didn't apply myself. Uh, yeah. So, well, anyway, so, but I'm sad to say if I never did it, I, I wouldn't have met Hodge because I was in, I took German again and he couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't get in Spanish. Here's so another fuck. pivotal moment. He couldn't get in Spanish, so they put him in German. Right. And mm. and then here we go. So we met and then uh, we in class and it's a, a guy that was doing a beat on the on the desk, and uh, uh, somebody else started rapping. I said, "Oh yeah, I can rap." Cause I was doing a little bit, you know what I'm saying. I wasn't coming into it. I was writing uh, probably since eighth grade. I was started writing about eighth grade, mm. like I, from what I can remember, that weren't poemish. Right. You know yeah. what I mean. I first started writing poems. You know. So yeah, I yeah. think everybody did. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> so, but uh, so so what happened was a uh, funny moment is. They uh they tried to have me and Hodge, which is one of the members of the group, battle rap, but rap. He was like, nah, man, we you know what I'm saying? Fuck that. We ain't finna be nobody's entertainment. And plus we was like, man, we too dope. Let's do something together. Yeah. Right. Boom. Then we formed it. wasn't at ease then. It wasn't nothing. But that was the moment of when at ease began. And then uh me and uh Hodge, um, still friends today, man, you know what I'm saying? Um nineties about thirty years strong, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I'm, but they tried to pin us against each other, and but we didn't go for it, and we just came together. I met Fred. He he had somebody he was already kind of rapping with, doing recording stuff on a little four track, Man. you know, a little four track machine, and, and or or and plus we was we was recording on tape record on uh, tape uh, oh, boom man. boxes back then. Yeah. You know what I mean too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so but um, so then uh, then Jeff came in later on in the group, but uh, but that's how At Ease got got formed. And shout out to Daniel West. Uh, gave the name. He had a uh, a name. He was retiring. Was at ease, and we was like, man, we our first group name was called Ransack. Man, and, uh, yeah, we first, at ease was first called Ransack. Uh, and then, but we Y'all became at ease. Yeah. <laughs> we we. <Ransack> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so that's kind of pretty much how at ease formed and a brotherhood, man. Uh, and we we did a lot of things, man. We got we had a record deal, performed on performed on the Apollo. Um, you know, we had a lot of performances and stuff. We was pretty active, man, in the in the area, and and uh, you know, we we was we was a force to reckon with. You that's know what I mean? Like, Shout out to the pop and, uh, right. <laughs> right, Shout out on, to y'all rubbed on the log, huh? Y'all no, not facts. Yeah, I touched stump. Yeah, man, okay. yeah, facts. Yeah, I ain't mind, with man. these hands right here. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Funny story though. Um, story on that. Uh, we went to Apollo. Our, our manager Shay, he kind of. He got us in there. Uh, we submitted a demo, got us on there. A shout out to Robert Allen too, Black Fist Studios, big mentor of mine that uh, mentored me, and I wouldn't be what I'm doing where I'm at if I didn't meet him. I was about 16. It was the first time getting in front of a big boy recording. Well, anyway, so back to Apollo. So uh, we we get on stage. We had our song, one for the money, two for the hoes, and we had overalls on. So you know we we it's Bama now. We talking about fucking New York in the '90s rap. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we talking about pre. The probably people they fuck with is Ghetto Boys with Bond playing tricks on, but they ain't fucking with yeah, Bama. Oh, no. We talking about so '90s overalls. New York, oh, Manhattan. No. You feel yeah, me? Right. So, uh, but you know, but later on you see Chris Conflict do this stuff and different things. But anyway, so we had overalls on. Anyway, so it's just first perception. They started booing. I was I was the first one to start rapping, so you already automatically know. I didn't even get three words out. I didn't even hear what the fuck I had to say. Right. Woo, but but pretext a little bit. Shay, our manager, asked for five mics. 
being part of the group. Curtains open, the crowd, and he says, "Yeah, Apollo, we from Huntsville, Alabama." Instantly, you already know Man, okay. we repping Alabama in the heart of that shit. Man. In the mid, in the early nineties, bro, they it's like ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We need to get it. We ain't have, we didn't have a chance. Too. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and yeah. a white dude. This pre Eminem. Yeah, this this, this third is, base. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, yeah. All right. Y'all country fucking. <laughs> yeah. Bama. These Bama, Bama. motherfuckers, yeah. literally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but yeah, it was a good, great experience. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, we walked around. Walked around downtown Manhattan. We missed the ride. We was walking around with luggage. Man, shit was wild, bro. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's fucked up. Once yeah. in a lifetime experience. <laughs> no, facts. Uh, but, but it wouldn't change nothing, though, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. And uh, we had a record deal with Sylvia, uh, Sylvia Rome. Well, Daryl Simmons, third partner, LaFace Records. Uh, we we had got he got us set up in front of a um, showcase in front of Sylvia Rome uh, at ease, and and uh, we got signed to a record deal. It was back in '95. Uh, um uh 95 96 and and we was uh uh artists on a label um electra records we were label mason mjg eight ball they weren't that big now they just had coming yeah. out hard yeah. we we should have did something with them we didn't we weren't you know what i'm saying like thinking yeah. forward man you know what i'm saying stuff so, we didn't know we thought we had made it bro you feel me you know what i'm saying we, we staying in, we staying in atlanta so yeah, just we, basically just being at school going to school and just Doing what you was doing, you we came up. straight out of high school. That's signed, why, pretty much. That's what's we up. got we came straight out of high school, got signed. Yeah, that's yeah. what's up. Uh, but uh, all right, because I did, I wasn't familiar with that. I mean, it, I <laughs> I am from Huntsville. Uh -huh. I swear, but like I don't be knowing none of the stuff that these <laughs> folks know in Huntsville. I don't know what I was. I know what I was doing, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't be knowing. So cool. That's what's up. I I appreciate learning about stuff that was happening around here. Um, two five six. Yes, sir. Check this Tatum. out. So you on the band? You on you on the band and island? You stuck on this island by yourself. You got a record player. It's the only thing on this island. Mm -hmm. You can bring five records. What you bring? Albums or just yeah. it don't matter. Yeah, Album can be Whatever. Woo, five albums. Good lord. For the rest of your life, this is all you can listen to. Um, I guess you ain't got to be on the band in Ireland. You you can just be living your everyday life. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. You can still only listen to these. If five I can albums. only listen to five albums the rest of my life, I made it fucked up. <laughs> Man. She's out there starving, thirsty. <laughs> That's, I'm gonna have to. I'll do some research. I'll shoot some stuff out of my head. I know I, I would love probably to have my catalog. Would be one of Prince albums. Um, I can't say for certain. Probably maybe the Purple Rain one. Okay, um, man. Definitely um, some Michael Jackson. Probably that Off the Wall or either Thriller. I uh, some Prince and some Michael Jackson out here. Yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a Prince over Michael Jackson fan just for a fun fact though. Oh you know yeah. I mean? If it's in the debate of it, you know, just you know, um, but um, I'd have to have uh, a Michael Volano and a Lang on Lead album with me. Okay, then we got three Michael yeah. Volano and who? Uh, Lang on Lead. Uh, uh, um. Super dope artist and and guitarist, uh, musician, just overall producer. He's he's super dope. Uh, we do a lot of work together. Uh, nine times out of ten, if you hear some uh, live guitar stuff on my on my, my productions or whatever, it's most likely Lang. Lang I'm on right, lead. Shout out to Lang. Yeah. Then, um, man. We got three, two more. Um, no more music forever. The last <laughs> two albums. You see, I really don't listen to a lot of other people's music. Yeah. I mean, I have, but I'm, okay. Let me let me say the album that I get on my spiel. Um, give me some uh, Chris Brown, probably that. Um, it's the one with that weird cover. Is it Utopia? What is it with the yeah, purple? I don't know it's um, is. I'm not sure. That, yeah, that, but I, um, I, I, I don't know. No, no, no. And oh, that's, a, that's a hard question, man. One more. Um, we're gonna make it easy. We're gonna present the hard questions. Facts. Um <laughs> Nightline. I, I would say uh NF. Okay NF. then. I did. Yeah. NF album, yeah. Who was who's NF? Um 
You just had to look them up. Yeah, the letters. Right. The letters. I, yeah, I just see it was like an N and then the F yeah, backwards, um, maybe. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of his stuff just resonate with me. This is what he talk about. You know what I mean? Pushing through stuff. So yeah. You think Chris Brown is a better overall artist than Michael Jackson? Oh, that's funny because my homeboy sent me a picture of Michael Jackson giving the crown over to Chris Brown. <laughs> no. So you know, Michael you know, one of them pitches, you know. That's exactly what I said, but this is my take on that. I, I say Michael Jackson can crown Chris Brown, but you can't get Michael Jackson's crown. I, I feel like Chris Brown does, does his thing too, but I, he's not a Michael Jackson. Nobody ever be Michael. That's like saying giving somebody Jordan's jersey. I don't know. Well, I don't, one, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's that, what I think. I don't think, and we don't got to stay on this long, but just mm-hmm. I don't think that, I think you're right with that statement. I don't think you'll ever be able to be a, because the way time is, the way the access to artists is and was, the way that writing teams and production teams were and are now, all those different things, there's no way yeah. that any person today could ever have the stardom that somebody back then had the way that they right. did. And so plus, you could never do that. But as far as just an artist, if you look at this person as mm-hmm. an artist and this person as an artist, their singing ability, their dancing ability, their performance, their whatever you put into the artist package, mm-hmm. Which one's a better artist? A better artist? Uh, I only ask because I find it interesting you had the three in the conversation yeah. on your list. Prince, Michael, and Chris. Yeah. Um, in my personal opinion, who's the better artist? I'll say this. I find myself listening to Chris Brown more than Michael Jackson. Okay, then. Okay. So, but it depends on what yeah. I, but I, you know, so I've I had my Michael Jackson phases too, though. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. he ain't releasing no new not. stuff. He, he was, a, he was, he ain't releasing no new His whole you know? life. I ain't never <laughs> had no Chris Brown phase. Yeah. <laughs> not necessarily a phase, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, but I, I fuck with the music. So, like, a lot he of people. Like I'm that. just saying. I, yeah. I was trying to think. Like, I listen to Michael Chris Jackson. Chris got some fire music, man. But I ain't yeah. never. It depends, on, it depends artist. on what I'm doing, but like, like I said, I really artist. don't listen to a lot of other people's music because I find, not for long, lengths of period. Of course, I, I check the water every now and then, attempt yeah. the pool and see what's out there, or what they're doing, what does it sound like, different genres or whatever. But I, I try to stay away from listening to on repeat because I find myself in the past implementing those sounds in different cadences yeah, and rhythms. It's influencing. Oh, I'm trying to make this track like Dre did, whatever. Like, yeah. so I can think in the past, like I'm gonna make a beat like I heard. But nah, you know what I'm saying. So I think it is good to stay in tune, but I don't want it to influence my sound. I'm trying to still keep my sound. Yeah, without, you keep your palate clean. You gotta have influences. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we all influenced by something or somebody. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. So I say Chris Brown to answer this. Chris Brown right now. It might change. It might be different next month. Word. I don't know. You know? That's fair. That's Michael fair. Jackson. fair. <laughs> yeah. You're Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson yeah, nah, so, I, so I got a question. Why do you say Michael? Jackson? Why do you feel Michael Jackson? Well, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I don't want to hear nothing from Chris Brown. For <laughs> real, for real, so I got a biased opinion. Gotcha. I'm, well, so I'm what Michael is it about Jackson Chris Brown fan. that just, just no, like trash? No, I just ain't heard. He doesn't nothing. like R and B unless it's a gangster that sings. I think it. so. I ain't heard he nothing like from Chris Brown. From like I like that motherfucker. Unless you probably shot somebody, then he'll listen to you sing. Unless or you, you oh, have to cuss while you're singing. I think if you cuss while you're singing, you got a good chance. And the only time Chris I'm Brown cuss when it. he's singing is when he's talking about fucking. <laughs> and he's not going to listen to Chris Brown singing about fucking. But Michael Jackson didn't cuss. But it, it, if you old, though, I fuck Mike. with old music. But he here's the thing, too, Mike. I said about my homeboy, about Miles Jackson real quick, and, and we ain't going to stay on it. But <laughs> then what I said, too, but we, the population, we we uh, as an audience, had him since, uh, not us, but. A child. We're talking about yeah. a child on yeah, stage yeah. getting down with adults. It's a whole different. Yeah. Chris Brown can. That's why I say it's a, that's really it's, an unfair it's, yes. comparison. It is. And, and plus, they different music to me. They yeah. are not in the same yeah. genre lane. We talking about a different time, a different era when they created music. You know, like I never, I never knew how much James too. Ingram wrote on the Thriller album, right? And all that stuff. Like you said they had writing teams, and yeah. even though Michael Jackson was a writing genius and you mm-hmm. know musical genius. Uh, you know, uh, why not have five of them? That's right. what I think. And, and, and real quick, I'll segue. I know I'm long winded, but I think that's one of the problem in our area is that this thing. And I'm always collab when I try to collab with other people, work with other people because 
if I'm good at what I do and you good at what you do separately, what the fuck we can do together? Right. And it don't matter. And I think it's a fear that saying, well, if I do something with somebody else and it's doper, then they get, it looks like I'm weak. No. It's it just means two genius minds fucking collab together. Folks and are it's too just a mindset about around the community. Want the and, and, want the no, they want to be the, first, the one or the first one and only yeah. one. It ain't about that. You know what I mean? That's my spiel on that, though, man. Yeah. Yeah, I Hopefully agree. I'm with you, man. Spotlight for real. Y'all, might be y'all better get than them. together and cut that bullshit out, man. I ain't yeah. Right. <laughs> shit. What Pimp C said? Have a, whatever Pimp C said when he got out and was talking to all them Texas niggas about stopping that bullshit and mind. get some money. Whatever Pimp said, do that shit. Be friends, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> shit. I'm just saying. Nah, fact. But um, so check this shit out. You could be an animal. Any kind of animal for a week. Fuck it. <laughs> what kind of animal are you going to be for a week? Can't turn back until the week's up. An eagle. You're going to be an eagle. A bald eagle. Yeah, I know. Yeah, a bald eagle fine. Yeah. This is- no, ain't this the biggest one? No, no, that ain't not that I don't want to be the biggest. I think a golden eagle is. The, I'm not oh, sure okay. though. Don't give me the line. Well, I, the I just, I just shouldn't get because I say bald. I'm not very educated, real versed on different well, kind. I don't want to say a fucked up eagle. Man, okay, <laughs> but an eagle, an eagle, uh, because it's uh, just sometimes I want to fly away from the bullshit and just okay, get away. Man. You know what I'm saying? Just get away and sit on my roof. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Motherfucking eagle. Plus, you can shit on motherfuckers. I was just about to (laughs) ask, like, (laughs) who who you going to shit on? Uh, Respectfully disrespectful. (laughs) Gotta be some big shit coming from an eagle. (laughs) How does does good luck? They say it's good luck if a bird shit on you. I don't know. But I feel like it's like the beginning of bad luck at least. (laughs) What? Especially if you're clean and you're going somewhere. Like, Like, in the middle of it or something. And and then I want to know, like, when whoever came up with that first did it. Does it count if you standing <laughs> under a tree, like where birds would already be, or do they have to, like, does it have to be you more looking random? For birds, shit. Like, like you walking down the sidewalk and you that's get shit on man. by yeah, a bird flying that, by. I wonder, I wonder I, where that saying come from. I, that's interesting. I've seen this shit happen. Because if you standing under a tree, you probably gonna get shit on. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, or even a fucking wire. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Really. like well, they ain't have <laughs> wires tree, back really, when though. they made it up. That's in my Fact. mind. That's true. At least. That's true. I have no idea if that's right. Yeah. I that motherfucker's you know. old as hell. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, man. it's okay. so stupid. Yeah, you it's just like, it's just like really saying. Oh, that's a pterodactyl shit. Oh, he's lucky. <laughs> that's a lucky motherfucker. A pterodactyl shit. Bullseye, you know. man. man <laughs> broke his fucking neck, but he's lucky. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just oh, like shit. using the John, though. That's a, yeah. a, you know what I'm saying? That's that just is. somebody who invented it. You know I'm, I'm just saying, like, this thing, that's like thousands of years ago, motherfucker invented the toilet and called it, you know, his name was John. So still today, we be this like, I John. figure I use a John. Man, okay. Like, I don't think I've ever said that. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I've never said that. Yeah. I, when you that say be, a John, I looked at you a little bit like, John. It, it's common. It, no, but it, it might be more yeah, of a white folk do, thing, too, I, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? More of a uh, ca- Caucasian thing. Like, you know no, man. country <laughs> folks, too. This is the country thing? Yeah, country folks say that. John. John. Go get John. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Eagle, you can have free dinner guests, special dinner. Mm. These guests can be alive, passed on, made up characters, just anybody that you can imagine. Three of them come to dinner right now. And I want to know what a dinner is, too. Mm. You said you want to know what to? So let me see. Let me get the location first. Um, Every time you ask this question, I assume they were at this kind of long picnic table in the clouds. In I the think, clouds? Yep. No, we had a restaurant. Okay. We were bustling. Just I think. <laughs> I say the crib. Oh, at the house. Oh, okay, then. Right. Um, just for a home. Home environment, comfortable environment, yeah. not for myself, but for, for for my guests too. Okay, then. You know All what right. I mean, and and some good home cooking, maybe not necessarily by me, but it's some good home cooking. <laughs> uh, who? Three people. Malcolm X. Okay, then. Um. Quincy Jones. And Van Gogh. 
Vince Van Vince and Van Gogh. Before or after the ears. He the one that that's the one that It had to be after the ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After the uh, ear. After the ear, that's when yeah. he started. Well not necessarily started, but yeah. yeah. You know why he cut his ear off? I don't remember. I read that before. I don't yeah, remember why. Yeah, he um trying to get attention from a mad. lover that yeah, that didn't want him like that. No, the bitch yeah. ain't want him so he cut his ear off. Yeah. Damn. From what I understand, now, I ain't Get saying like you, do, you can, I might fight back check checking my ear. Yeah. <laughs> halfway, but uh, but uh, yeah, those those are the three, and uh, man, that's that's a tough one. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's just what what was coming to me now. You know what I'm saying? I that's feel the like second table one. Malcolm's made. Yeah, I think Mal- Jesus. Yeah. I think does Jesus have the most appearances. I think Jesus does have. Jesus the most Jesus has the most appearances, probably probably about three or four. Or some form of God. Yeah, that's the second table Malcolm made. So Van Gogh, yeah, that's the first. Yeah, this is the first I think time. Quincy is the first too. Yeah, Quincy Jones too. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's an interesting. Uh, I want to know because it go Van from Gogh and Malcolm X like to black, to black <laughs> to artist, black to artist. I want to know what that conversation. Malcolm X and Vince Van Gogh. <laughs> you don't think they're gonna get along? I mean, I, I, they might. Well, I'm just interested in the conversation, though. <laughs> they, I don't see why they wouldn't get along. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I like that group. That's that is interesting. What are y'all eating? Um, what are we eating? Uh, Mama's home cooking. Um, Whatever Mama want to make. Yeah, it depends on what the guests eat too. I gotta keep that in mind. So I just, I guess. Oh yeah, so Malcolm there. Well, just in be general, general period. I don't know what the fuck Van Gogh ate either. Hell, but yeah, okay, I don't think Van Gogh gonna give a fuck. I think yeah, he yeah, gonna be the best pick of what I He might have ate. I ain't even got no ear. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, uh, just some, some good old home uh, uh, soul cooking, southern cooking. You know what I mean? Um, just you know, whatever that table yeah. looks like. You know. Um, favorite genre of music? Uh, I have none. Okay. I have not one. Yeah, Do you have, have a favorite song that you've done? Me personally? Yes. Um, my new favorite right now, the song that I've done is called uh, "I'm Betting on Me." Okay. okay, then. And that's it's everywhere you listed too. earlier. No, it's not out yet. I'm putting it out uh, next year. It I, might be a single this year. You know what I mean? Uh, it's <laughs> called I'm Betting On Me. It's, it's off the uh, Self Love Syndrome album. Okay. That's what the album is called. And that's also unreleased? Correct. Yeah, it's kind of a new so shit. Yeah, yeah. Y'all need to post a note it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell y'all shit. Exclusive. Y'all on here. Don't yeah. Yeah. It, you got a release date? Uh, For the single, no, I don't have a release date. It'll be... Okay. Um, <laughs> by October the album will be 2024. I, I'm thinking maybe New Year release to start New Year self love. All right, y'all put a reminder in your shit. I ain't yeah. mind. Yeah. That damn go yeah. get it when it come out. Most likely New Year. Most likely at the New Year. Um, dream collab. Chris Brown. Do you have a dream producer collab? Teddy Riley. Oh, get it right, all right. Good, good answers, man. I, I like these answers. Um, back to Kato. Back to me. <laughs> yep, I got a new one. I know it. This <laughs> I just knew it. I felt, I felt so over there. Like, hello. <laughs> See your luck. You woke up, found out you was dead. <laughs> you woke up and you found out you was dead. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it happened sometime. <laughs> It's gonna happen to everybody. But you, I'm being guaranteed. Yes, you, sir. You got the option to send back oh, shit. for one person from Earth. So I'm taking a life? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, like that's when I understand the question. Like, no. Because he you said can, bring. You can bring them with you. Like, you can, oh. I want, yeah. So you can be either way. It could be like, I love them. I want them to be with me and I'm selfish. Or it could be like, no, nah, fuck that person. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay. I can't ask this question. Oh, yeah, no, nah, we can't ask this because now you got to tell who you want to kill. Never mind. We're going <laughs> to gonna take that one out. <laughs> I got to kill somebody to be with them. Like... I just thought about that. I just thought, okay, I got another one. Oh. <laughs> you tried to put me in a trap. I did. I did. I did. I just realized Jeez. I was asking you to, to give me somebody's oh. name right now. Oh, um, <laughs> what's the talent you? I ain't trying to snitch on myself. Don't man. know right. you have. Put a new disclaimer. I'm sorry, you said what now? Front. What's the talent that most people don't know you have? Mm. Hmm. 
I got good. Yeah. You juggle knives. A talent that most people don't know I have. Hmm. Um, I'd say cooking. Mm-hmm. Everybody cool. don't uh-huh. get this yeah, experience. It, yeah. Bobby. I mean, I do my thing. Now, I ain't no, you know, um, Bobby Boufflet or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't uh, know Bobby Boucher. The one. Ain't that what the name Bobby that the dude to be grilling he on? Right. Yeah. Um, he was right too. I don't know. Oh, no, that's said, the dude from the he movie. He said the Race water car. boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah water boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he be. <laughs> I ain't know him. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I ain't do my thing a little bit on the grill. You know what I'm saying as well. Grill. Um, you know what I'm saying in the kitchen. Um, now I ain't, I ain't. <laughs> I ain't like scratch cooking like, you know, biscuits right. and shit like that. That's you know what I mean? That's so. a difficult question to answer, man. I mean, it's not a bunch of stuff that you do that people don't. Like most be. people don't have like this one secret. Yeah, they don't have access to my cooking. So that's what I'm thinking. Somebody, like I, I walked have, in someone's house. Uh, somebody what's today? might have a secret I walked place. in someone's house only, yesterday. I could play the piano I'm good as fuck, around. but I only do it by myself. No, they don't do that. Some people, somebody <laughs> knows that they do that. They know how to play But everybody know, though. Like, yeah, then they, I ain't presented it to the fuck that question. Sure. Okay. That, I, I, walked in, I walked in a random room in this house. All the rooms in the house regular. I'm walking around the house doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Open up this one door. All, every wall is five or six shelves of nothing but Lego statues. See? That's a talent <laughs> I bet no, nobody knows. He got a yeah, secret. I don't think nobody knows he has the Lego yeah. room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can be the richest person in the world. Mm-hmm. Or you can have two superpowers. What you want to do? Oh. Mm-hmm. Richest. The richest person in the world. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think I think because me personally, I can do more change with being the richest person than changing with superpowers. They're gonna be scared as fuck of me. They gonna come after me. They don't okay, know what the fuck going on. Gonna, Give yeah. me the money and I can make changes. I'm gonna be a villain if I had superpowers. <laughs> Always hey, there's some good villains out there, though, man. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, then. <laughs> I'm not gonna be one. You said that was easy. Which which one you, you want? Superpowers. superpowers. Yeah. You think superpowers? So I'm yeah. gonna get the money. Get right. I could if I, I probably now don't you, even need the now money. Now you a villain too? No, I didn't say I was gonna steal nothing. I said I would take the superpowers. Nah, okay. All right. I'm gonna take the superpowers. That's a new one too. That was new. Hmm. We got some new questions on the survey. <laughs> <laughs> um, childhood heroes. Tell us about that. You got any childhood heroes? When you was a child, you wanted to be just like this person when you got older. Um, the earliest recollection of somebody I didn't know. I've had some great idols and mentors. Um, but first one I can remember, I played soccer. And I was a goalie, and I think it's um, – I forgot the goalie's name. It might be Tony Miola or something like that. But I used to want to be him or be like him, you know, yeah. young, and be that goalie. I think he was a raw, pretty raw goalie back then, and I played goalie for about um, probably 12 years. Um, when I, I was put in about six in or shape. seven. Man, okay. So that was the first shape, thing shape. you wanted to be, the soccer player for real. Yeah. Okay, that, that yeah. I can remember as I wanted to be like somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, and, and but um, just a little funny side note, fun fact that when I, how I became a goalie is uh, I got put in um, uh, recreational soccer and we, I was probably about five or six, started about five or six. And uh, coach let us pick position. <laughs> I picked the goalie position because I said, well, I ain't got to do all that running. No running. Mm-hmm. Makes sense and guess what me. happened? I ran, ran all goddamn day no. in practice. No. You run, the, you run the field. The only you time do. you don't run is when you play in the game. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, like I had that same mentality. But I had yeah. it. But I, you know, it was the best decision I had because I enjoyed it. I was really good at it. So yeah. that's why I yeah. say I use it in shape because I know I, I, <laughs> when I be doing track, the soccer team be practicing, and I'd be like, damn, the goalie got to run with them. Especially if you, <laughs> especially if in the up. midfield or halfback, you got to play both sides of the field. You know what I mean? So yeah, them motherfuckers be running. Man, that's all they do. The yeah. whole yeah. practice is yeah. run. Yeah. <laughs> They just run. They be, no they be running that way. They be running that way. They be running back up the other way. Be like, them niggas still running. That's why I had no interest in playing soccer. Yeah, when I was little, I liked it. I, I if I had known, if I had known already, you'd have to run like that in practice, like in high school and stuff. I, uh, I would have. Yeah, I, I can imagine like, nah. though, because I mean, playing football, you don't run that much during the game, but you got to run in practice. 
So mm-hmm. I'd imagine if you got to run doing the game, you got to run even more in practice. Yeah. So. And it sucked for me because I don't even, I didn't, I didn't require the skills, but I needed that exercise. I needed Hell. that mm-hmm. endurance. Man, what, okay. What I love about the goalie position, I was, I was trained basically not to take out people. Like I, I was yeah. trained by a good coach. I had a coach. I think his name was a Boko Cole, and not necessarily in that format. But <laughs> he was a soccer coach at A and M, and he came. He was brought over and trained, and he just showed techniques. And I, mm-hmm. I would have trouble playing street ball because when I jump, I lift my one leg up for the rebound. I'm kneeing motherfuckers, and Damn. they want to fight. But I'm like, this is how I jump. <laughs> Basically, to protect yourself. No. You know, so you come out on the corner, Michael, kick, you jump you need up. The fuck out of here, <laughs> Ong, Ong Bok style, you know, Ong Bak no. style. You know that dude, Tony yeah. Ja. <laughs> but nah, this is a karate ball. <laughs> Hell to the die. That's funny. Michael, I ain't playing karate ball, guy. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. I remember folks wanted to fight me, bro. <laughs> All right. So, you got time machine. Mm. You can go back. You can go forward. You can take two people with you. Where you going? Who you taking with you? What you going to do? Uh, I had to say Hodge and um, Lady Lace. Oh, two people. Dude. Two people I'm taking with me. I remember Lady Lace. Shout out to Lady Lace. Yeah, back. Yeah. Super dope artist. Y'all go. Y'all go stream her stuff. Uh, Lady Lace first. All streaming platform. Where um, y'all going? Uh, where are we going? Where are we going or when? When y'all going first? Hey. When? Yeah, that is. We going the, to the eighties. We going to the eighties. <laughs> Not to the eighties. Yeah, we going back. We going back cross to the Cross colors and shit. <laughs> right. Oh, Romans yeah. was open. Yeah, Romans. Hey, Romans uh, still open. When not? Well, I don't think Romans was not. Anyway, so I think that's the eighties, just because I think if I I've been kind of asked or thought about that question before, and it's just my favorite decade that I remember the times of how it felt. Yeah. You right, know what right. I mean? So. Uh, but uh, where where are we going? Is that the question I just won? No, where are you going to when you get uh, to the eighties? <laughs> where you going at in the eighties? Shit, at my mama house, working some music. Oh shit, okay yeah. then. Yeah. All right. I, just, I made some stuff at my mama house that uh, it's probably the energy there, but I, I it's hard. Sometimes I can replicate it. It yeah, I'll just say my mama's house because it's just something about that in my in my room. And we ain't gonna change nothing. That's the point because no. I. Don't uh, change nothing. Okay, then. Nah, I don't, Not if you're going back to, to go get it. That's, <laughs> you don't want it, it to be changed. And another, I don't think even if I go back, I wouldn't. I mean, that probably, it would change some things. You know what I'm saying? We're going back because I didn't know Lace in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Is it a question? Am I going back in age? So then, or am I going back as age now? Yeah, you know yeah I, mean? I think no. you're the yeah, you same age now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, just to experience that in the '80s, and, my, and for us three to get into my mama's room and just vibe out. You know what I'm what's your? That's that's interesting because I I was gonna ask this. Um, what's your studio process like? How do you like to create it? What do you um? It's how do you do it on a solo tip, like mm-hmm. by yourself? Are you sitting there writing some? Are you freestyling, punching in? Are you when you're making a beat? Are you is there? I always start with a melody. I always start with this, and then when you work with other people. Do you kind of go off their vibe to create? What's your process like? All of that. I would say um, the same way I process. It used to, I used to have different processes, but now I have one process. Mm -hmm. Um, The same way I let my gifts use me. The music tells me what to do. The music tells me what I hear. Um, In the same way with the artists, I, I position myself to be a conduit where we tapping in and they tapping in through me. So I am coming out their energy, their vibes. Like one of my favorite things, that is the, the favorite thing of doing music or audio period for me is the process, especially with other people. I enjoy it with myself, but doing with other people is just something different. When you have, like I go back to earlier, that's why Quincy Jones is one of them because when you hit it, when you said people don't bring in people who write and work together, mm-hmm. we have five musical geniuses in one room and we open-minded and work together and, and working toward the best of that song record album you're going to get the best results yeah. you know what i'm saying if, if everybody has a mindset so but the process i don't have any one way so I, I i don't start with drums i don't start with melody i usually start more with melody than drums i'm, I'm I, if, if i had to break it down specifically like that but it's not i'm not in a box 
because I feel like when you put it in a box, then you get trapped and that's not letting the music use me. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do a certain thing with the music, not the music telling me what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but my process is, is energy, feeling, emotion. Uh, it's all about emotion to me because I've heard a lot of fucking awesome songs that I didn't like because I just wasn't feeling it. But they sounded good, but they just didn't make me feel the good. Energy yeah. Yeah. So it's the emotion for me. That's, that's the biggest part of my process, and that's why I love working with other artists, other producers, other engineers, man. Us engineers. I, I ain't going to go in that whole spiel. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the process, man. Um, yeah, well, if an engineer want to share the sauce with you, Man, or, the engineer is the heartbeat, bit, like, man, for me. You know how they say the drums are the heartbeat of the most, you know, in any yeah. bands and all this? To me, the engineer is the heartbeat of it, and don't and they don't get their just dues and what they do. So many uh, artists' sound is cultivated with the engineer, you know what I'm saying? Same way with they, you know, back in the day with DJs, or now they have certain producers that they can have their right. sound. And, but yeah, the a lot of people don't realize heartbeat. Drake wouldn't be Drake without 40. And he if shot him know out who though, you know but, what and I mean? that's because so yeah, one he's few, one of the few that. Yeah. But he know without him, know he wouldn't be as he wouldn't be as <laughs> his sound wouldn't be a sound. He still would be dope, yeah. But he wouldn't have that sound, that either. emotion, that or, resonates or so like, much. Or like uh, Kendrick's. Um, mm. I'm forgetting his name now. I hate I'm forgetting his name, but Kendrick's guy that does that also. Yeah, God, that's that's fucked up. <laughs> and I don't think people really understand how how we. Uh, resuscitate and save a lot of people who, who can't, you know what I'm saying, perform at the level that we make it sound at. And that's no disrespect. That's part of the process. That's our job yeah. as an engineer to polish it, to polish that diamond to make it shine. And you know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying, I'm not shitting on, you know what I'm saying, people that, that don't hit notes on point because I don't. This there for a reason. It's tools. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, but I just think engineers don't get what they're supposed to get. So shout out to all the engineers out there because. Yeah, yeah. Um, the music that's out there now, it can't exist without us doing that. Doing Shout out to the do to it. He ain't lying. It's too, oh, it's too much. Shout they, out to y'all. It's too much they do that makes the I seen shit like, work. Man. I seen like this. What's the first thing you do when you get in the studio? Did you press and play? Are you asking the engineer who are running the session to hit play? Yeah. Don't you start with the engineer. Or yeah. Whoever engineering that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know what none of them brothers is doing, man. Yeah. Goddamn. So, and it's a lot of people who won't who can't and won't perform in a studio without a particular engineer, without a certain engineer, or just can't, you can go and pay for time. The very first, I remember the very right. first time I went to a studio studio, like I remember this, this shit was tucked off. So you would never know it was a studio. Like first time I went to a real studio in a real city, like I was up outside of DC. We as Khalifa been here, 50 cent been like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like it's a whole name, like it's a real studio. Like I go in here, did not like that motherfucker. Mm. And it just felt different than recording with somebody else that I record with. We're recording with Diesel, and I don't even know Diesel that well. But right. Like, it just was different. So there's people who can't perform in a place without the right engineer and, and won't even put that out into the air. That's true. So they all Diesel. Yeah. I'm recording song for Diesel yeah. too. Yeah. Shout out Diesel. <laughs> He's always cool as hell. Right, right. But I think, and just to kind of reiterate on that, I think because the very one of the first process, the most important process to me as an artist is how is somebody tracking me? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I got, um, you know what I'm saying? I enjoy other people tracking me so I can be just the artist sometimes and not even the engineer. So oh, I can, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but, but with that being said, it's like, it's very important of how it's being recorded, whether it's an instrument or voice, because well, your voice is an instrument. But that's the first step that's most important because me as an engineer, if I get it trashy, I got to repair it. I got to make yeah. it sound back right. It might not be all the way there. But if, if you give me something that's even like really decent or good, then it's going to be amazing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm yeah. just even so tracking is an art form. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying? When you're and out there tracking, take somebody. it seriously. You know what I'm saying? Because how you record your voice with floor noise, how loud you got it. You know, all those stuff is very important. Proximity effects. Like, you need somebody to tell you, like, hey, you too close on this take. I right. can hear you too close on the mic. You know, I'm, I'm right here instead of, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you can hear the proximity effect. So with that being said, like, a lot of people don't have that microphone etiquette to know when we need those people, engineers and stuff like that. So just just, just kind of, you know, say best bet, just be mindful of that when recording. Of listen to it by yourself and not with the music. How how's it really sound? You know what I'm saying? Because when you give it to engineers and they bump it and boost it, you can have all the floor noise, that air condition, 
and the back of fan ticking. You know what I'm saying? It just depends, shit, anything. Yeah. So as far as, you know, so just yeah, right, just keep man. that in mind. So you know what I'm saying? Y'all should listen. Y'all should listen. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. <laughs> oh, that's a drop with me. He ain't lying. You remember coming to America when he said he ain't lying. Hey. Oh, <laughs> hey. uh, you got anything the album coming up? Uh, well, well, that's uh, something. Maybe in the new year we got an album yeah. coming. Maybe a little bit before that a single. Anything else you well, working this, on? Or? Well, yeah, this stuff is active now. You can go to Michael Volano, uh, go to Chevron Shotty, Shotty. You know what I'm saying? Spell like that. S H A W T Y. Go go check. And y'all yeah. check out his, his special he, sessions he too. Yeah. Know him. yeah. Um, stream Lady Lace first. I mean, there's a, you know what I'm saying a lot of people that that uh, well those in particular. I guess we gotta get lace on. Got, you know, get we, got, we got yeah, 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 on. Yeah, we got you yeah, on. Yeah. We got it. I ain't the Bet, yeah, so, nah, so yeah. up the trio. Bet, bet. I definitely uh, get with it. And, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, but, come true, man. Come um, true. But yeah, so so go go check some. I tell you, one of my favorite. I give you one of my favorite songs. I think that people should go check out is, and I released this at the beginning of of, of this year. Uh, it's called Amputation. Uh, check that out, uh, Amputation. Um, it's one of one of my um, favorites and one of my favorites. You know, it's all time favorites, the ones that okay, I've done. That's out now. That's active now. That's what's up. But uh, go go stream Lost. It's got me. Uh, it's a Chevron Shorty track featuring me and Hodge One. Uh, go check that out. Lost, super dope. Uh, one of the most recent things that that um, Ear Vision, uh, my um, studio company, produced. And uh, and recording and all that stuff and and on. It's called Lost. It's under uh, Chevron Shorty. Uh, it's one of the newest ones. And uh, Sunday's Best. Got to check that one out. If you okay. smokers, so you know we all know, we didn't smoke it. So Sunday's right. Best, hands down. If you smoke, you got to check it out. Okay, the, man, the, check that out. The newest track to me and Chevy got is uh, Sunday's Best. It's um, uh, Chevron Shorty featuring Michael Milano. So. I bet y'all yeah. check that yeah, out tell too. Tell them how to book some studio time. Yeah, they try to yeah, book just, some studio uh, time. Just email me at uh, Earvision Studios HSV at gmail dot com. Um, we also uh, got something going on, and we we working with y'all too. What we what we talked about uh, is yeah. is um, reach out to me. Um, we're we're selecting up to three artists to get an hour and a half uh, that from these viewers of recording time. Yeah, we're gonna be y'all uh, hour and a half. Yeah. We might as well line up. So so what I'll do is I'll I'll have them have y'all pick it for us. Yeah. You know, and then that way uh three people from uh that are subscribed to y'all so you know all that stuff. I think you know however y'all wanna yeah, run it. Yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. be subscribed to to y'all and Air Vision and Michael Volano, you know all what I'm right. saying? Something yeah, like yeah. we gonna set up. But yeah. but yeah, hour and a half, uh three three artists, you get an hour and a half uh recording um on on me. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, fire, we're just bro. gonna pick one. We're gonna pick okay, one. just one. Yeah, okay, bet, bet. That's fine. And uh, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and take all the slides. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, come on. Uh, but yeah, if you want to book Air Vision Studios, um, uh, hsv at gmail dot com, or you can reach out to me, DM me on any on any of the platforms. Uh, Michael underscore Volano <laughs> on Instagram and uh, Michael Volano on uh, Facebook. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, come. Come come get some of this cook up. You know what I mean. I love the process. Let's let's plug in together and and uh, make make some uh, you know some history. Amen. Already. We appreciate you coming through, man. Appreciate I appreciate you, you putting me dope. up on some yeah. shit I ain't know nothing about from my own city. I ain't no man. I, Shout I, I out like that this shit. Uh, appreciate appreciate I, I uh, y'all. Yeah, cause Chevron Shorty out. Uh, he he was shouting out Ear Vision. Um, yep. I do remember yep. being in contact <laughs> with with uh, Lace a long time ago mm -hmm. about some music. So I know she been doing a thing for a minute, so we gonna get her through here. And uh, this has been another special session, guys. 256-788-7339. Ask the smokers at gmail.com. We out this bitch. Peace. Hello.